starting uh, batch one, uh, what will either be Hregs Medu, Koryos Medu, or Srechrotho Medu. Uh, it's my Proto-Indo-European mead project. Uh, for one, we've got the flour, we've got barley water, and we have a tea, yes, Pippin, of Meadowsweet. And they're all going to go together along with some starter. Uh, I figured it out. So basically what we need uh, is the 28.7 ounces of barley water. We got 62.8 ounces of water or tea. Uh, uh, this first one I'm going to uh, do as a tea. The second one I'm going to infuse as just actual meadow sweet, a gram per thing. Uh, and then uh, 4.5 ounces of the starter. So uh, let's kick it. Now right away, this uh, this honey smells almost buttery and creamy. Bloop. Um, very floral as well. I swear I know that smell. Uh -huh, makes me think almost of uh. Well, actually, it almost smells the same as the meadow sweet. Uh, this honey, by the way, uh, is coming from the Ukraine. It's uh, Carpathian Healer honey, mixed flower step raw honey. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to get the uh, rest of that honey out in a moment. Okay, barley water. So, according to Dalby et al., or actually it was just Dalby, uh, he proposes that uh, the original Proto-Indo-European beverage was mead, and that it was made from honey and possibly barley mixed together. Uh, and according to pottery evidence, uh, meadow sweet pollen has been found in what are drinking cups in tombs. And so, therefore, uh, it seems that meadow sweet is going to be the best flower, and he also put in this argument that uh, uh, meadow sweet, uh, the flower specifically, uh, may uh, etymologically rate uh, originally come from uh, to sweeten mead. So I'm going to pour some of that in there, and here's my meadow sweet tea. Now we're going to shake this up and try to get all of that honey out. Yes, Pippin, your highness. You, I love you too. Are you angry that you're not right with me right now? I know you're not with me right now because you'll be trying to steal the honey. Honey is not good for burbs. Honey is not good for burbs. I love you too. 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 He's a good Pippin. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yes, by the way, that is cuneiform that says lift, laugh, love. Okay. Dun dun dun. I think that's shaking enough. Da, da, da. Now, I had seriously hoped to do a wild starter with this because that would have been amazing. Uh, I tried. Uh, I've let this. Try and ferment for a while, but uh, no dice. Um, we're actually going to mix this. Uh, correction, we're going to try and mix this. Come on. Come on. Okay. 
Okay, this has been sterilized in star sand. Oh, wow, how did that zoom in? Oh dear, okay. Sanitize that. Dun 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 dun. I have no idea why I'm doing the. Uh... Okay, and so we need now. Oh, I need to resanitize that. Hold on. Okay, I've now sanitized it with uh, instead of star sand, uh, I used the clear spring grain alcohol, something that. Uh, I should mention, by the way, this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be far cleaner than any fermentation uh, that anyone in Proto Indo European times uh, would have done. Um, <laughs> they didn't have the ways to um, not distill. What's the word? Well, they didn't distill either, obviously, so they wouldn't have had a pure grain alcohol to disinfect with. But they didn't know these concepts of disinfecting or anything. Um, yeah. Uh, this is not cat claw, honey, by the way. I'm just using this as a... Uh... Okay, good. It is fermenting in here. So we want four point... Ah! Okay, 4.5. Now, the yeast that we're using, by the way, since I couldn't wild source and I tried, uh, we're going to be using uh, Lavalin EC1118. Uh, I did put a whole packet uh, into the starter there. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so what I tried to do with this starter uh, before uh, settling, settling, quote unquote, on a non-native uh, non yeast uh, is that first I took an extra jar uh, of this honey. Since it was raw and unheated, I had thought, uh, courtesy of the suggestion of uh, winemaker Craig Gonerman, uh, who's also done some meads in the past, and this is definitely my most ambitious historical project, um... Uh, he suggested that basically I mix some honey with water and leave it for a day or two and see if it was bubbling. It was not. And so what I did then, uh, after uh, a day of that, is I added uh, just a pinch of meadowsweet flowers uh, from this bag here. And no dice there, because I thought maybe, well, maybe there's wild yeast on the flowers. Uh, but no dice on that. And so uh, I have settled... Option three, which is using the uh, lavalin, uh, which may or may not have even recorded. So, uh, in case it didn't, let's do it again. Uh, so, the yeast I'm using uh, is lavalin EC1118. Libre de OMG de gluten. Uh, in other words, it's free of gluten. Uh, which just makes me think of all the jokes I used to make about the uh, gluten liberation front. Alrighty, we're gonna pass that in. Okay, that has been there. Uh, let's. Boy, I wish I had someone here to film this for me. 
this would make life a lot easier. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, I just put in some uh, of that grain alcohol into that now. Child, I love you too very much. I know you're mad that you're not with me right now. I know you're mad. I love you too. Love you too. Me, 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 me. Uh, do, 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 do. So, as I said, I have three uh, different possible names I'm thinking of. Uh, both are rooted in Proto Indo European. Uh, so, what we're going to do. Uh, is uh, figure out the final name later, but we're gonna do batch one. Hmm, maybe not. Is that even... Okay, uh, we're not gonna use that one then. So we have uh, batch one with a meadow sweet tea. Uh, now, Proto Indo European does actually have a rude for, uh, word for fermentation. Uh, Bollox it all, if I can remember what it is right now. Uh, but anyway, we're going to do batch two. So, version two uh, of this project uh, is going to have the meadow sweet flowers added directly into the ferment rather than brewed as a tea. Um, now, I thought about using a brew bag. Um, in fact, I actually did buy one. Um, but, okay, okay, fine, I'll bring you. I'll bring you Pippin. I'll bring you Pippin, but you can't eat the honey. Honey is dang, I love you too. 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 I love you. Love you too. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I thought about doing it as a, within a brew bag just to make things easier to clean. But uh, I don't think anything like a brew bag would have existed um, in Proto-Indo-European times. Uh, I think that uh, they wouldn't have had a... It is unlikely that they would have had a way to separate that stuff out. Um, I don't... Uh, they may have had linen. They didn't have cotton, but they may have had linen. And the other big thing they had would have been wool. Uh, which I don't know that you could actually uh, do a uh, bag with fine enough mesh. And also that runs the real risk of uh, adding extra fun stuff that would spoil the batch, I think. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to... Uh, what doing... Pippin is also trying to explain his knowledge of Proto-Indo-European here. So this one, instead of doing the metal sweet as a tea. Mmm. Goodness me, that tastes delicious. Uh, like I said, uh, I am going to uh, add that as a water. And so like I said, we will need uh, 62.8 ounces. Uh, which actually, I should heat up now. Uh, now, normally I do spring water, uh, but I thought just for the sake of uh, experimentation, and also because I couldn't get to the spring in Sedona uh, anytime soon, uh, I just bought some distilled water. Uh, so first, though, we're going to add the Meadow Sweet. I'm 
going to empty out this. Uh, briefly sanitize that with some rubbing alcohol. Or not rubbing alcohol, excuse me, grain alcohol. You do not want to use rubbing alcohol. That's the wrong type of alcohol and that will kill you. Uh, Hot pipping. According to all the videos we've been watching on YouTube from Chubby Emu. Okay, so we want 68 ounces of water, which means I'm going to have to pour this. I'm sorry, 62.8 ounces. Dun, 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 dun. Not too concerned about the meadow sweet in there. Since it is all going to be going in the fermentation anyway. So let's see, 62. So we put in 32. Oh yeah, look at that, 30 even. So it's only gonna be a little under, but uh, it'll work. Oh, I'm gonna have to add some of this in cold instead of warm. <laughs> silly boy. You're a silly boy. Uh, so we're just going to put this in at 104 degrees. I don't want to uh, uh, make it too hot for the yeast just yet. And now we're going to shake this. What are you doing, step hun? What are you doing, step honey? I'm fermenting into a mead. Uh, at least you thought it was funny, Pippin. Uh, actually, this looks uh, kind of cool right now. And as you can see, uh, this is already starting to kind of bubble and ferment. <laughs> Pippin, is everything so hysterical for you? Hong? Huh? Where did my... Where did my metal? Oh, there it is. I want to get a picture of this here. Dun dun dun. Possibly for the gram. What doing? What doing? What doing? I have no idea if this is actually pointing in the right way. Huh. Are you helping, Pippin? Are you helping? You being a good boy? Being a good boy, Pippin? Now, the thing that isn't a Proto-Indo-European ingredient that's in this barley water is lemon. Uh, but I'm okay with that because otherwise I would have spent God knows how long trying to grind barley. And then mix it with water and then, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's not 100% perfect historical, but... To my knowledge, this will be, uh, but to my knowledge, this will be the most accurate uh, reconstruction, recreation of a Proto-Indo-European mead. Okay, now I've, uh-huh. What are you sorry for, my love? What are you sorry for? What are you sorry for, huh? Good oh boy. I would really like to get all of this honey in there. Uh, each of these is two pounds of honey, by the way. Now, had I been smart, and I'll do this for the next one, um... I would have gotten gravity readings, uh, which would have given me an idea of when I need to potentially cut off fermentation because most likely the original Proto-Indo-European mead would have been very light in alcohol, uh, probably no more than 7 or 8% ABV. Um, I totally forgot where I was. My phone overheated. Oh! Um, 
So Proto-Indo-European does have a words for fermentation. Uh, Kuet or Kwat are the reconstructed Proto-Indo-European words for the fermentation process. Uh, they have given themselves over to a bunch of other different words. Um, kvas in Russian, for example, uh, is a big one. Uh, oh boy, this is, I should have done the, uh, I should have done the brew bag. I can already see that this is going to be, um, interesting is definitely going to be a word. Uh, I fully expect this to potentially, uh, blow up out of the fermenter. Uh, but, uh, maybe it won't, maybe it won't, maybe it won't, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll trust in, uh, the Yusfater, uh, the Indo-European sky god, uh, because, uh, why the heck not? Um, I've been really delving into a lot of, uh, Proto-Indo-European, uh, cultural possibilities and the like. Uh, during this project. Uh, over here, by the way, uh, I put in some rose water and a little bit of extra meadow sweet tea I brewed. And there is other things that are going to be in it. Uh, this one is going to eventually be uh, Scythian Warrior Girlfriend, uh, which is going to be a mix of uh, the steppe honey and a few other honeys from Central Asia. Uh, but now, uh, here comes... Uh, here comes the mess. Maybe. Now this is not my first uh, historical attempted mead. This is actually technically my fourth. So the very first one, I did a version of Paoma using the local ephedra species. Uh, then we had uh, Ian Nasir's, Nasir's special Kugestian elixir, uh, which was an attempt at a Sumerian style brew. Uh, not as accurate as I would have liked because I didn't have any barley water, and so the future version is definitely going to have some of that. Oh, that's a lot of metal sweet I'm losing. Uh, and then I've got an Egyptian. But anyway. Uh, this may be as mixed as I can get it. Um, that's a bummer. I'm going to have less than the amount of uh, metal sweet in there that I wanted. Okay. Um, now let's get that uh, starter going. And then I'll clean this up and then do uh, mood three. Or uh, version three. Now version three, by the way, uh, uh, is gonna be where I, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> version three is going to be where I add in the meadow sweet post fermentation and during secondary, uh, which might actually be the cleanest one. Maybe we'll we'll see. Uh, but anyway, let's. Ah, uh... oh, that was close. That was very close. Okay, um, now where did, okay, okay, that's ready there. Okay, I'll uh, see you guys in a moment for version three. For batch three, uh, as I mentioned before, this is going to be the uh, batch where I'm going to add Uh, 
Um, before I forget, uh, I want to make sure that I get a specific gravity on this. I don't expect the expected gravity to change much between these three. After all, it is the same amount of honey, um, which means the same amount of residual sugar. I doubt that there's much in the way of residual sugars uh, for fermentation in the meadow sweet. Um, I, I mean, I could be wrong, uh, but I don't think it's gonna affect it much. Uh, I also have a batch of rose, future rose mead going now too. Uh, when it rains, it pours. Uh, and that's gonna go in this two uh, gallon bucket fermenter. And that's gonna have some fairy duster honey and Washington wildflower honey. But I digress. The water is heating. Dun 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 dun. No idea if this even looks good on the camera. Wee! Oh, that's not gonna work. Okay. Gosh, look at that bright, cheerful color, though. That's a happy color. That's a happy yellow. That's a yellow that would even make um, Bob Ross happy, I think. Hop huh, Pippin. <laughs> I love you, Pippin. You're a good boy. Oh! I really hope that this filming doesn't give anyone vertigo. <sighs> anyway. So to get the rest of this honey out, I'm gonna use this barley water. Pippin, really? Um, there's nothing to drink there, buddy. There's nothing to drink there, buddy. Huh. Beep. What doing? You, where have you been the last? I love you too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. So anyway, we're gonna shake this up. Now, that being said, uh, this attempt at Proto-Indo-European meat is probably not going to be uh, the oldest version of mead recreated. I think Dogfish Head has that beat uh, with their Chateau Jihau based on uh, pollen remains found in pottery on the Jihau Neolithic site in China, which was sort of kind of a mead, but sort of kind of a beer, but sort of kind of a wine. I guess Dogfish Head isn't doing anything like those anymore, which is pretty sad. Huh, Pippin? That, I have no idea how much got lost there. <laughs> but anyway. So anyway, I went on a rant there about uh, Dogfish Head and how they're only doing IPAs now instead of their historical beers, like Chateau Jihau, which would technically be basically the oldest reconstruction uh, of alcohol. Uh, discovered in archaeological sites. Um, Midas Touch would be dating from maybe a thousand years at most after this. Uh, which was their stuff found in a uh, tomb in... Was it Turkey or was it in Crete? I can't remember offhand. It was one of the two. Uh, but anyway, um, do, 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 let's get this good and mixed. It's amazing already what 
how much different this one is in color. By the way, uh, apparently it's fine to do this before fermentation. Uh, the oxygen is only going to help the yeasts once they get it in fermentation, but after fermentation starts. Alrighty, so we've sanitized our special, whoa, collector. of alcohol here. And now we've got our hydrometer, which has also been sanitized. So according to this, we should be sitting, when this is done fermenting, assuming I let it ferment to completion, Nope, pivot, nope, nope, nope. At 15%. Uh, uh, so the final thing we gotta do is add the starter. And add this back in. And seal her up. And then uh, we wait until they're done fermenting. And uh, there we go. I hope I remember to piece these together and hopefully it works. I love you too, Shippen. Love you too. Good Pippin.